come one, come all. Welcome to the Catholic Podcast. Truth still matters. The human person is made for truth. Despite this dictatorship of relativism, we breathe every day. This podcast exists in the stream of the new evangelization championed by Pope John Paul the Great and continued with Pope Emeritus Benedict the Sixteenth and Pope Francis. We will have the opportunity to learn and reflect on the timeless truths revealed by God and deposited in the Catholic Church. If you're looking for apologetics or theology that can be applied to your life right now, you've found a new home. Stop drowning in the world of opinion and embrace yourselves for truth still matters. Better believe it. The truth still matters. It's the truth that ultimately sets us free. And I want to thank you for being with me for another episode of Truth Still Matters. This show is a part B from the last show. The last show, we talked about the great miracle of the Eucharist. This show, we're going to discuss the term that is used to describe this miracle that happens at Mass. Have you ever heard of the term transubstantiation? Transub who? <laughs> transubstantiation. <laughs> Hold on. The Catechism of the Catholic Church informs us that the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. It's where we come from. It's where we're headed. It's our high point. The life of Jesus is reproduced in us in this great miracle of the Eucharist. And we refer to this great work of God at every divine liturgy as transubstantiation, where you have the change or the transformation of the substance. The substance of what? The substance of bread and wine into a new substance of Jesus's body, blood, soul, and divinity. Now, in order to shed a little light we've got to look at what is meant by the term substance. Look at the word on the screen. Substance. Sub stance. To stand under. The substance is that which something is. The essence of something. Its nature. What something is can be distinguished from its accidents. In other words, its appearances. The things that are accessible to the five senses. Now, in order to bring this down to everyday understanding, we've got to look at a reality. So let's look at bread. <laughs> How appropriate. When you look at bread, what do you see? What do you smell? What do you taste? <laughs> if you're anything like me, I love bread. I love Italian food, period. But bread, it can be brown. It can be white. It can be a beige kind of color. It can be soft. It can be hard. It can smell freshly baked. It can smell not so good. What can it taste like? It can taste like heaven. 
They can taste warm, they can taste cold. Do you see these things that are accessible to our senses? Things that we can touch, things that we can see, things that we can taste. You can even hear bread. <laughs> Actually, that's the sign of great bread. Remember that, <laughs> that movie Ratatouille? <laughs> when you squeeze the bread, the nice crunch lets you know that that's a good loaf. These are things that are accessible to the five senses. These are accidents or appearances or the species, things that can change. But the accidents don't make up what something is. Is the bread what it tastes like? No. Is the bread the brown color? Well, no. Is the bread what it smells like? No. Is the bread what it sounds like? No. Well, what is the bread? <laughs> well, that's a good question. What is the bread? The bread is all of those accidents taken together. And no one sense can take in all of those accidents together. Once you have all of those accidents together, those things accessible to the five senses, it's the intellect that abstracts from what those accidents display to what something is. Yes, I can touch, I can feel, I can see, I can hear certain accidents, certain appearances of this bread, the things that change. But what detects what it is is my intellect. My intellect can put together all of the accidents and get to what lies underneath or what stands under all of these accidents and that is the essence of the bread. The essence or the nature of the bread is discovered by the intellect. And this is how we operate for every reality. Look at this table here that I'm at, or the screen that I'm presenting before. You see the squareness of the screen. You see the color of the screen. You can imagine how hard that screen is. But the hardness, the shape, the color is not the screen. What is the screen? All of those things taken together and not one sense senses all of them taken together. It's the intellect that senses what that TV screen is. Now, let's look at transubstantiation. The priest stands in the person of Christ and he speaks, this is my body, this is my blood. This is Christ speaking through the priest. And it's at this moment, by Christ's word, that a miracle happens. The substance of bread, the substance of the wine is changed. That reality which lies under all the appearances is changed into Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity. But you say it still tastes like bread. It still tastes like wine. It still looks like wine. It still smells like bread. It feels like bread. All of those things remain. Those are the accidents or the appearances or the species. They stay the same, but what has changed? When you take all of those elements together, what normally is bread, the intellect now has to depend not on common experience, but the word of the Lord that says that this is no longer bread. This is Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity. But you do have the appearances or the accidents that remain the same. It's the faith that has to tell the intellect what this is now. And this is what the sacramental reality of the Eucharist is all about. I do want to make a correction. Last podcast, I said that we digest Jesus' body, blood. And I want to backtrack on that. I don't want to backtrack on the sense that it's not the realness of Jesus. It is his real presence. 
But the Eucharistic reality or the sacramental reality does not extend itself in space. There is no digestion involved, okay? But it is the consuming of the real presence or the substance, that which lies underneath the appearances. This is that reality that he talks about in Revelation, where he says that he's going to make all things new. Transubstantiation. May God bless and keep you all the days of your life. Amen. Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water. Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. This beginning of miracles manifested forth his glory. Hey yo. The wedding was the setting for his first sign That the word might take the water, make it turn wine The earth's light displayed obedience His time ain't even come yet He'd see to it, he'd help him when she needed him And even if the dilemma didn't phase him He still changed it, but you know what's even more amazing? What the guests tasted was judged to be the greatest Wine ever made and it was all for that cana The savior would perform mad more Miracles so fat those who saw would stand in awe He had peeps that were poor lining up in all To be fed bread and fish that was raw to set it off his disciples told him to send him home This request is the most impossible I've ever known Five thou can be fed with only five loaves But the Lord showed all men for what he is known He said unto Simon Launch out into the deep and let him let down your net When they had this done They enclosed a great multitude of fish Jesus said unto Simon